On Larry King Now, the talk Cheryl Underwood. I would like to project the power image. Only in daytime can a woman go from being on the wrong side of the tracks, no education, not the right family, and then go on to start her own business and then become a billionaire. Is there someone you're dying to work with? I'd like to be produced by Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. I think they understand me because I'm really a man's comic as a girl. I always tell people, pray for his success. If he fails, so goes the nation. So we want to pray that you evolve into a great president. Plus. You know who told the best penis jokes? Milton Burrow. Oh, I knew Milton Burrow. Man. Listen. Oh, did he know penis jokes? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Today's guest is actor, comedian, and host Cheryl Underwood. She's very shy, so we're going to do our best. <laughs> We've seen Cheryl on the small screen in The Odd Couple, The Young and the Restless, and The Bold and the Beautiful. Yay! She's also starred in films like Beauty Shop, Bullworth. I was in Bullworth. Yes. And I got the hookup yeah. since 2011. Cheryl has co hosted the Emmy winning daytime talk show, The Talk. It airs weekdays on CBS, and on April 29th, for the second year in a row, she will co-host the daytime Emmys alongside Mario Lopez. Yay! You're nominated for host. I'm also nominated. I'll be there. What Yay. can we expect? Well, I what are we think... Gonna, what are you going to do, Cheryl? Well, I will be changing clothes and wigs a lot. Clothes, wigs, mm. and shoes. Because I feel like, you know, when you host something, you got to give them the wow, the pizzazz. You know what I'm saying? So people want to see the fashion. They want to see the clothing. They want to see a little bit of the banter. But I, I would like to project the power image. Only in daytime can a woman go from being on the wrong side of the tracks, no education, not the right family, and then go on to start her own business and then become a billionaire. She can die and come back. That's for sure can <laughs> with her brother's baby. Her <laughs> That's brother. correct. That's right. And her uncle fled away with That's her. That's right. <laughs> uh, your talk co-host Sharon Osborne was here recently and she told me that the talk has worked well saying we don't pretend to be something we're not. Mm -hmm. We're totally ourselves at all moments. You agree with that? Absolutely. What have you learned from people like Sharon and Sarah and the people you work with? With Sarah I've learned uh, humanity. She is the most loving person, uh, and I love her dry wit. Those, those are two things that I really love. She knows how to spin a joke. Sharon Osborne, um, I just love the fact that as wealthy and powerful uh, and eccentric as she is, she is the most down-to-earth person, and she's kind of like a mother big sister figure to me. She also answers what you ask. Absolutely. Ain't afraid of nothing. No filter, no filter. Julie Chen, uh, I would say dynamic. What I love about Julie, she's iconic in the news, but she has a very wicked sense of humor. And Eve, I'm just so happy that she's here. I've been loving her uh, since the hip hop days, Rough Rider days. Glad she's there. And Aisha Tyler, two comics working together. Yeah, Aisha. It was just a great job. Are you all friendly off camera? Absolutely. We text each other. Uh, we call each other. What do you think your role is? On the uh, you would have you... a place. What is Cheryl's role? Julie said that sisterhood came when I came, but um, mm -hmm. I'm the comic. I, I, I'm, I'm the comic. I, in my mind, I believe I'm... Uh, uh, You're a comedian. Uh, yes, but I believe I'm I'm Buddy Hackett. I believe I'm uh, Dodie Goodman. I believe I'm Carol Worley. I believe well, you go back, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. I real let's go further back. Sophie Tucker. You oh, know, I really, used to I want to be. Work. Yes, and don't you remember the days when? And I'm sure this is politically incorrect. Back when you used to be able to smoke and drink. And I'm tell you a little story. So I, back when the Tonight Show was on for 90 minutes, right? You know what made me want to be a comic? George Goble was killing Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Johnny Carson. I'm the only guy here with brown shoes. That's it. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> I knew all of them. Yes. <laughs> Buddy Hackett came on Larry King live on CNN, mm -hmm. and he said, you hear about the guy with wooden legs who lived in an all-wooden house. <laughs> uh, they saved, they had a fire. They saved the house, <laughs> but the guy burnt to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy Hackett. 
<laughs> but okay. You know, Sharon. I met Buddy Hackett in the um, Laugh Factory. Met him at Laugh Factory, and I just ran up to him, and I oh. said, Mr. Hackett, I love you, and anything you say, and he pushed me back, and he said, all that love you showing me, show to your audience. And then he hugged me. He's a great All guy. right, Sarah Gilbert is back, and she's on Roseanne. Yes. Did you see it? Yes, I've seen it. And is I'm it that good? Mm-hmm. It's great. It's great, and what I love about it, it brings back that multi-camera, you know, sitcom, and I'm happy that it's happening, and I hope to get one myself. You want to do a sitcom? Absolutely. You'd be I a riot. I, I would mm. love to do it. What guests surprise you the most on the talk? Um, I would say when Larry Hagman came on. I love and Larry. He, he was wasn't here. feeling well, and uh, and I thought I was over talking because I just got there, and. Uh, I said, Mr. Hagman, am I too loud in your ear? And he said, no, old JR ain't feeling too well. Keep talking so I don't have to talk. And he sent yeah. me a hat. He said he died. Yes, uh, and he, when he passed on. But I would say the guests that I know, the comics, uh, the people that I know, we have the most fun. Would you like the talk to get more into serious stuff? Well, I think we are a respite away from certain types of uh, discussion. Well, you do better than the view now, right? Well, I, th I think we're holding our own, but the one thing I love about the talk, we handle very deep and serious conversation. That's the, that's the beauty of having Julie Chen as the anchor, because when we talked about the shootings at, at school, when we talk about uh, something that happened in the country, when we talk about our military or first responders, she knows how to pivot us very well. And, uh, you know, we're all pro-military, pro-first responder, and I think we don't have to do what other shows do, but we do a uh, deep conversation very, very well. Would you like to have Trump on? He was on when we were in New York. He was on and he came on. He was very, very nice. He wasn't like he is now, but he was... Okay, well, well, I'm know, sorry. Am I not supposed no, to say that? I know him 40 years. and uh, So what is I happening? Don't, I don't know this Trump. Um, a lot of people I know have said that have said that. But he was on the show and he was a very nice, I, nice My first man. question to Donald, and I spoke to him all through the campaign, mm -hmm. haven't heard from him since he's president. Mm -hmm. I would say, what happened to you? Right. But you know what the catch is, too? I always tell people, pray for his success. If he fails, so goes the nation. So we want to pray that you evolve into a great president. Are you a comedian first? How do you look at yourself? Uh, you mean for the job you, on the talk? You, no, you. Oh, for me. Are you a comic first? In your heart, are you a comedian first? Do you think yes. it's funny? Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. And and with age and wisdom comes, there's a time and a place for everything. But sometimes a good old joke at a funeral goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> when we return, Cheryl Underwood on her unique style of comedy and later a game of If You Only Knew. The talk airs weekdays on CBS. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with Cheryl Underwood, one of the stars of The Talk. A lot of people don't... Oh, I didn't know this. You were in the Air Force Reserves? Yes, I was. Yeah, it went in right out of high school. And how you'd have to go every year? How long did mm -hmm. you go? We went uh, uh, once a month, uh, and we would uh, train for two weeks out of year. We, that was when we thought we were going to fight the Russians. <laughs> yeah, and we used to put on our chemical warfare suits. And uh, being a reserve, I went in at... I was going to high school at Castle Air Force Base, so I went in at Travis Air Force Base, but I also got a chance to see the world, meet a lot of great people, and uh, serve my country at the same Where'd time. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Atwater, California. Well, really, I was born in Arkansas, raised in Chicago, Omaha, Nebraska. And then we, my mother married a man who was stationed at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha. And he so got, you were a military brat. Yep, got transferred to Castle. And my dad was still in Chicago. Were you a funny kid? My brother, my oldest brother, Michael, is funnier than me, but I was studying everyone. My dad told the best stories in the world. My father was the best storyteller. When you started doing stand-up, did mm -hmm. you do military jokes? Uh, no, but I, I wore my Clark Kent glasses that they <laughs> give you in the military, and then I had... Uh, I was very provocative. I, I wanted to be uh, Richard Pryor. I loved Dick Gregory, so I wanted to merge a political discussion and Godfrey uh, Cambridge. I wanted to be those two men because I wanted to be able to talk politics like Mort Saul. You know, so I want to talk well. politics. What's still alive? That, and and hoping to meet him. If you could arrange that. He lives in L.A. Okay. Kind of secluded. He was brilliant. Quiet life, huh? 
quiet life. Come out with a newspaper and a jeans. Sure did. And... Mm hmm And would just talk. So I wanted to be able to do uh, politics. These your idols growing up. Right. Politics, religion. But I wanted that sexual swagger uh, and independence that Richard Pryor had. And we were all studying Richard Pryor. So when I started out, I, I wanted to do comedy like a man. Is there someone you're dying to work with? I'd like to be produced by Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock. I think they understand me because I'm really a man's comic as a girl. How, so how would you describe the Cheryl Underwood brand of comedy? Oh, it's very sexual. Oh. Very... Cheryl? Real. Yes, but you know, you can really get away with a lot of uh, political discussion if you put sex next to it. You know, but but I like like I like the Catskill, I like the Minsky Burlesque, I like the Vaudeville. You know, I I liked. Remember when they had the Friars Club in Beverly Hills? I'm the dean of the Friars in New York. Listen to me. I'm the boss. Of the How Friars do Club. I get in the Friars Club? You're in. Okay. You're in show business. Deal. You're in. Listen to me. This... Friars Club in New York. Anytime you come, you get food. You're in. Yes. You're in. But I remember going to the one just, in Beverly Hills I know, but that's and close. sitting with those guys but just, and hearing the best jokes. You know who told the best penis jokes? Milton Burrow. Oh, I knew Milton very well. Man, listen. Oh, did he know penis jokes? Yes, <laughs> yes. So that's what I wanted to perfect. But and then be able to take that skill, clean it up, and then go on the Tonight Show and then go on game shows and be a professional talk host. Next time you're in New York, mm -hmm. just call the Friars Club. So you're Cheryl Underwood, you spoke to Larry King, you're in. Good. Okay. Yay! This is the best. Oh my God. As a black woman in Hollywood, did you experience a lot of roadblocks? Um, you know, a lot of us feel that way. I didn't feel that I experienced roadblocks. I just didn't think they were ready for me. They're, they're not ready for me. So I have to, I, I felt I should be patient. And, and then they will get ready for me. As long as I perfected my skill as a comic, you will get ready for me. What's the PACRAT Foundation? Uh, PACRAT Foundation for Education um, is a 501c3 California uh, corporation, nonprofit corporation. We have a sports initiative, MPHC, HBCU, Historically Black College and Universities, and the National Panhellenic are nine black Greek letter organizations, fraternities and sororities. And we try to help children as young as three years old play golf, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, and tennis because of Jim Brown, Arthur Ashe, yeah, no. um, Tiger Woods. Woods, uh, Jackie Robinson. Jim Brown was greatest lacrosse player. Better lacrosse than football. That's right. That's he right. told me if they can make money in lacrosse, he'd have played lacrosse. He'd have played lacrosse. That's right. Oh, and Arthur Ashe was a great... Yes. I loved Arthur Ashe. That's Ash. right. In one of his last interviews. But just think if we could get young all, kids to play baseball. All like blacks Jackie in Robinson. baseball. That's right. Shame. That's right. Young kids. And get them to play in their community. After the break, we're talking childhood celebrity crushes, strange <laughs> fan encounters, biggest risks, and more in a round of You Only Knew with Cheryl Underwood. Don't go away. She's going to co-host the Daytime Emmys April 29th. She's one of the stars of The Talk on CBS Every Day. We now play a little game of You Only Knew. Okay. Childhood celebrity crush. Ooh, uh, David Cassidy. Oh. Yeah. Guilty pleasure. Food. <laughs> <laughs> Strangest fan encounter. Uh, when I run up on them. Oh, sorry, you meant them, me or yeah. me, them. Them, you. Oh, uh, I don't know what's strange. My fans are like family. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They greet you like they know you. Yes, absolutely. Favorite talk guest of all time? Well, I love when Larry Hagman came on. The cast of uh, Dallas, I never thought I would meet them. I love when all the comedians come on, when uh, Cedric and uh, Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey and George Lopez. I like when the comics come on. Most challenging talk guest? Oh, well, nobody's challenging because uh, I believe in the uh, Jack Benny rule. Which if, is... if it's not going well, just... Yeah. Look at that's right. This is not going well. Just look Secret at the Secret talent. Uh I can sing. Yeah. I can sing. I'm not the greatest singer. You know, I I would love to be a torch singer one day. Who would you like to play Cheryl Underwood in a film? Me. So I get to check for producer <laughs> and playing me. What's the biggest risk you ever took? 
Uh, I use my talk money to finance a syndicated radio show. We're on in all over the world, but we're on in Australia, London, uh, uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, Philippines. What do you do, interview people? Um, no, we just do a regular, you know, discussion type show. Um, and we're on in 189 markets. Person, and I just got to find a way to make money off of it. I did the first national network talk show radio. See? 506 stations I ended up. See, with. I'm trying to get like that. I don't want just a regular thing. I want to get like what you're doing. Person you'd like to switch places with for a day? Uh, the president of the United States. Whoever, it is, whoever the president is. Person from history you'd like to be with or interview? Jesus. Best part about living in L.A.? Um... The lifestyle, the, where you can go from nothing one day to something. Worst part about living in L.A.? Nothing. I want to live here all my life. Too. Yeah, and only I want to live in beautiful downtown Burbank because I thought Bob Hope and Johnny Carson lived there for real. But then I heard of this thing called Toluca Lake. <laughs> <laughs> where do you live? Uh, somewhere in town. Oh. <laughs> What's the longest period of time you've been awake? Oh, um, we did a radiothon to raise money for historically black colleges and universities. We stayed up for uh, 30 hours on the air. What's an animal you wish you could talk to? Oh, I already talked to all animals. Oh, you do? It's when they talk back that I've <laughs> had a little too much. I need to put it down. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you ever got? Uh, put God first. Talk to everybody like you're talking to Jesus. Can't go wrong. My father told me that. Worst piece of advice you ever got? Oh, wow. That's the worst piece of advice I ever got. Uh, Did anyone tell you not to go into show business? Or? Uh, no. Ne never got, never no not go into show business. I would say worst piece of advice, um, don't wear that. Are you married? No, I'm not. Are you asking? No. <laughs> Are you married? Yes, I was. I am married for three years. Yeah. Have children? No. No. I have my transmission drop. Can't have children. Proudest accomplishment. Trying to be a better person. Cheryl Underwood in 10 years. A billionaire. A billionaire. Yeah, I, I, want, I want power. I want the power to change people's lives. And money can do that. Um, money assisted with power can do that well, to change people's lives. Well, money can bring lives. you power. Uh, no, if I think power, power brings you money. Okay. Is it, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of wealthy people who have no power. I want to be powerful. In our final moments, Cheryl Underwood will answer your questions from social media. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with the great Cheryl Underwood, Yay. who wants to be a billionaire. Who wants to be a billionaire? Yes. At Realist Lady MC on Twitter wants to know, how long have you been telling jokes? Did it start when you were little? Yes, uh, telling jokes started when we were really, really little because in our house, you, you want to make people laugh, you know? We want to entertain each other. Were you funny in the Air Force? Oh, yes, and that's when I found out I was really funny because we would play war games, and uh, I was in uh, Reforger, 82-83, uh, and uh, Team Spirit, Yakota, Yakuska, you know, over in Japan, We were, and then we were in Europe. And so when you have all that downtime, the commander would say, entertain us, and that's when I found I could tell jokes. Yvonne on Twitter, would you ever have an interest in hosting your own talk show? Without the ladies? Yeah, just your own, the Cheryl Underwood Show. Um, I would not want to leave the talk because I think we're best together as a group. Would I want to do other things like what Sarah's doing and like what Julie does and, and even Sharon? They have their own individual endeavors. I'd like to have that in addition to. Helen on Facebook, where do you get your confidence from and how do you maintain it even when things aren't going your way? Uh, You're always up. I get on my knees and I thank God for the blessing of being able to open my eyes again. And I, tr I try to think if I'm having a bad day, somebody's having a worse day, my job is to make them laugh. You know, that's the best way to do it. Because I hope when I that's see Jesus, good. he goes, hey, good job, all the rest of that stuff you was doing. <laughs> you know what Mark Twain once said? What said? When you get up in the morning, mm -hmm. eat a live frog and you'll never feel worse <laughs> than the frog. <laughs> At Ron Gold 14 on Twitter, mm -hmm. what's your favorite movie and why? Oh, wow. Uh, unfortunately, I have 
four right now. Uh, Casablanca is my favorite. Uh, Godfather 2, mm. Shane, and Black Panther. Black Panther. Loved it. Loved Shane, it. come back. Shane, Shane. yeah. Well, <laughs> was that Van, and Van Heflin? And Van Heflin. <laughs> oh, sorry. It was a great movie. Great movie. One of the greatest westerns. Pack Shepard on Twitter. I am empowered by how you find humor in the dark experiences you've had in your life. Mm -hmm. How do you manage to do that? Uh, my father used to say, not why you, why not you? So darkness visits everybody else's door but can't visit yours. You have to find a way to overcome it. You ever doubt your faith? Never. Never. Even, Never, even when, when my husband committed suicide. When Your husband committed suicide? Absolutely. My husband committed suicide and we were going through some dark times in our marriage. We'd only been married for three years, been together for seven. I thought in the first five years of marriage um, it was supposed to be rocky. I told my husband, don't marry me. I don't believe in divorce. I believe in counseling. We, until death do us part, we're going to stay together until we're too old, you know, to be apart. And um, Now, wait was, a minute. When he killed himself, yeah. how did you learn about it? Um, well, he had tried before, and I came home in enough time to find him and get him to the hospital. But then the next time, he made sure I could not find him. Uh, to do it, and I got a phone call. But I was I was sleeping, and I could hear this voice in my brain go, he's gone. And then I picked up the phone, and they said, we need you to get to the hospital. Your husband's had an accident. I said, no, he's already dead. And I came anyway. Paul Masson Brand on Twitter. As the host of a massively popular daytime show, you must walk a fine line between choosing provocative versus journalist topics for discussion. Mm -hmm. How do you navigate this? What's your guiding philosophy? Well, this, one thing I love about CBS and the producers at the time, they give me five good adult words that I can use on TV. And just they just tell me, don't use them all at one time in a sentence. But they let me get away with a lot, and I've learned a lot. But what I really love, I like those old gags, water gags, and Pratt Falls, and, and the sketches that we do. And I like that... The first thing you come to in a talk is the great conversation. But there's nothing wrong with dressing up like Little Richard for Halloween. That's fun, and that's what I love the Before most. the show, you discuss what topics you're going to talk Yes, talk. yes, yes. And then we run it by... Sometimes you got to run it by lawyers. Sometimes you have to run it by standards and practice. But I like that part, too. I love being produced, even though I'm very spontaneous. And you're live every day. Yes, yes, live every day. I love live. And you know what? I, I don't want... I don't want a child sitting next to their parents to go, what does that mean? But I also don't want the network to lose any licensing or anything. <laughs> so You're a guest. Thank you. I would love to come back here. I was scared to come at first. Come on. No, I was scared. Sca you didn't ask me the worst thing, what I don't know how to do. What don't you know how to Ooh, do? Oh, my golf game is hard. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. A big thanks to my guest, Cheryl Underwood. Next time, we'll try to draw her out. <laughs> sure to tune in to The Talk, airing weekdays on CBS. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time.